Hey everybody, this is Pastor Tyler Baker of Valiant Baptist Church, and we are located in the Jacksonville, Florida area. So I am coming to you with another quick video, and this one's actually going to be quite short. And in this video, I want to answer a pretty simple but yet common question that people are confused about, and that is when Jesus is referred to as the bright and morning star, what does it mean? So I've never heard a really good explanation for this taught in a sermon. I've listened to a lot of sermons from good IFB, good saved men preaching, and I've never heard anyone really explain this, and it's actually a quite simple answer. I'm sure there are many people that know it, but I'd like to put this material out there uh, just to get this information out there of what is Jesus talking about? I mean, he uses a title for himself. He obviously wants us to know what this means. There's a purpose for the title. We can learn things about it. Why is he referred to as the bright and morning star? And what does he mean when he calls himself this? So this is found in Revelation chapter number uh, 22. It's the very last chapter in the Bible. It's very close to the end of the Bible. And in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, it says this, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. And then he says this about himself. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So Jesus here says, hey, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. It's in the Bible for a reason. Jesus calls himself this for a reason. It means something, and we should know what this means. Now, in this video, I can give you a couple of hints also, and let's say tips on how to study the Bible. Now, number one, we need to not privately interpret the Bible. That means we need to not go outside of the Bible and use some other book to tell us what the Bible means. So no private interpretation. So let's just put P-I, right? No private interpretation. So that's what we don't do. But what should we do? What we should do is compare Scripture, I'm going to put an S for Scripture, with Scripture. So what we should do is compare Scripture with Scripture. No private interpretation. The Bible tells us this, that the prophecy is of no private interpretation. So we should not use man's words, some other writings to interpret the Bible. God will actually define what he means. God will tell us. Allow God to define himself. Uh, compare spiritual things with spiritual things. That's what we are commanded to do as Christians. And actually, of course, we can find the answer for what Jesus is referring to here. In 2 Peter chapter number 1 Verse number 19, we have this verse here. We're taught something very interesting. It says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. So it's, it's painting a picture of darkness and then a light shines. Now, what type of light and what type of scenario is this? It says this, Until the day dawn. Now, what's the dawning of the day? That's when the sun rises. It goes forward and then says this, and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, what is the day dawning? What is that referring to? Well, that is referring to the sun. That is referring to the, to the sun rising. It says until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, what star arises? Well, of course, again, this is just repeating the same thing twice. It's referring to the sun. Now, I want you to notice that the sun, number one, is called a star, right? So we see that, check. It's referred to as a star, and we, scientifically, we know this and understand this to be true today, that what are stars made of? Well, they're just basically, you know, big balls of hot, burning gas. Well, what is the sun made of? What is the sun made of? That What we refer to as the sun is also a big ball of hot burning gas. So these two things are, are virtually uh, and, and uh, naturally the same. As far as inherently and what they're, they're physically made up of, how they operate, they're exactly the same. You know, uh, obviously there are differences as far as the distance and things like that, but ultimately the sun is a star. Now, I want you to notice that in Revelation 22, 16, he's called the bright Star. Now, let me ask you this question. What is the difference between all of the stars that we see at night and then the sun, the, the, the star that we see at day? What is the, uh, during the day, what is the major difference between the two? Do you know what the major difference is? Is that it's, it's brightness, that it's much brighter than 
the other stars at night. Do you know what the other major difference is? Is that the other star we only see during the day. Just like this says, until the day dawn. And then it says, and the day star arise in your hearts. It is a star that we only see during the day. That is the other difference in the two. So we already checked bright, but then also what was the other thing? During the day, that's when we see it. Now, I want you to notice that there, when it's talking about the day star, what does it say? It says, until the day dawn. So what does it call the morning? It calls the morning day. And notice that when it says that it is referred to as the day star, it also says that the day star arises. Well, what time does that take place? It takes place in the morning. Now, in a lot of languages, uh, they will use the, the same word for the word day as they'll use for morning. For, an exa for example, in Spanish, when someone tells you good morning, they'd say, buenos dias. Well, guess what they would say if they wanted to say good day? They would also say, buenos dias. It's the exact same phrase because obviously there, there can be other words that they'll use for morning, but the two are also used interchangeably. Day and morning can be used interchangeably. So uh, what is the day star? Well, I believe that the Bible teaches very clearly that the day star is the morning star. And then when Jesus is saying that he is the bright and morning star, he is referring to himself as being the sun. Now, this is not isolated. Jesus is called the sun many times. And actually, a very famous example is found in the Old Testament in Malachi chapter number 4. And it says this in Malachi chapter 4 verse 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise. Now notice there it says that the sun of righteousness shall arise. Now in, if you read it, it's spelled S-U-N, as, as in the solar sun, right? Until the sun of righteousness arises, right? But then it goes on and says this, with healing in his, his masculine pronoun, wings. Who is this referring to? Well, in context, and even from that very verse, you can see that it is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that the play there, um, it, there's multiple things. You know, he is, he's referred to as light. In John 1, it talks about John the Baptist. It says that John the Baptist, he was not that light, but was sent to bear record of that light or bear witness of that light. Um, and he and Jesus, it says, is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus is likened unto light. He's likened unto light that gives life, right? Uh, and not only that, light shines in darkness. Light is what is good and what is right. Darkness is symbol symbolizing what is evil, what is wrong, what is wicked. So these are all reasons why these things are symbolic. But not only that, I believe that the sun, S-U-N, is also a play on him being the son of God, S-O-N. And I think that's why it's worded the way that it is in Malachi chapter number four. So this may have been confusing to a lot of people. And why is he refer being referred to as the bright and morning star? Well, what is the bright star that shines during the day? The only star that we can see in the morning or during the day, it's the bright star. You know what it is? It is the sun, and he is the son of God. God bless you, and have a good day.